everyone, I'm Steffi D. And I'm Lisa H. And welcome to Check In From Away. This week we are checking in with the dogs who've come from away Toronto. Thanks for joining us. Lisa, I'm so excited about this episode because we're going to be talking about and two dogs and their owners in that order. Yes, and with that in mind, we actually have a special uh, co-host joining us today. We have Oscar Wilde Humber, my Yorkie, joining us as a co-host today. Since I don't have a dog, I figured I might as well just dress up like one. Turns out I'm a makeup artist because I'm trying to look like the iPhone dog emoji. (laughs) Well, you really nailed it. Steffi, in fact, I'm going to say this is my favorite check-in for away outfit to date. So uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about co-host Oscar. He's Oscar Wilde Humber. He is going to be 12 in November. He's a purebred Yorkshire Terrier, and he's 10 pounds. Well, Oscar is more human than dog, or at least he thinks he is. So uh, obviously, he's obsessed with people food. Like, he loves cheese. He loves meat. He loves charcuterie night. Yeah, exactly. That's his dream right there. He's a very fancy dog with elevated taste buds. He is. I kind of picture him like as an old man. I I usually think like when I leave and he's home alone, he like, you know, mixes himself a martini and lights a cigar and kind of hangs out. Like that's how I picture him as a dog. Yeah, I mean, he's 12 years old. I don't, that's like 12 times seven, right? That's how you figure out dog years. So I don't know. How old is he? I don't know. Alexa, what's 12 times 7? 12 times 7 is 84. He's 84 years old. Yeah. So me and Oscar did a photo shoot together, and it's called the Rock and Roll Tea Party. An amazing photographer named Ashley Irwin actually was uh, launching a new company called Favorite Hello, and they were trying to do these dreamscape photo shoots. So she asked me if I would be interested in doing one, as a, for part of their promotion. Foggy, there are no treats left. There's none there. So I was hooked up with a breeder from our dear friend, Sue Dunstan, who used to be one of the standbys in our company. She was also one of the original standbys in the Broadway company. Um, She is a dog, guru slash crazy person. She has way too many Dobermans and Poodles, but they're all wonderful and she is the most incredible and knowledgeable dog breeder and dog mom. It's really important for our viewers at home to know that Augie is a show dog. He's the real star of the family, like real star. Uh, Augie was in a production of Legally Blonde the Musical directed by our dear Sasha Dennis, who plays Hannah in the Toronto company of Come From Away. He looks like a little bodybuilder right now. Like, he lo- he's yeah. so muscular. He's behind you, and he just looks like he's your security team. He's so buff. Yeah. It's well, awesome. He's, he's, he's good security. Let me see if I can get him to give high five. Huggy. Can I have high five? Can I have high five? Good boy. <laughs> yeah. That's so cute. Uh, he doesn't discriminate when it comes to sticks. <laughs> legitimately from twig to tree branch. Like he, he'll, right? That's your thing. He, he, he'll have a twig in his mouth and he will keep it with him all day. All day. Like wh- why? Listen, me and Lisa are two single gals and I know that you're not, you are engaged to be married to your fiance, Lael. And we heard a rumor that having a dog actually helps you pick up a date. Would you say that's true? A hundred and twenty percent. Even if I'm walking foggy, like at first thing in the morning, last thing at night, I always make sure I have my engagement ring on. Do you think if I walk Steffi, my dog Steffi on a leash, men would talk to us? Um, I don't know. I I don't know if you get the attention from the right men. Mm -hmm. Um, you might find some people who have interesting fetishes. We don't discriminate here at Check In From Away. You no, never know. Kate, what does it mean to have had Augie in isolation with you during this time? 
this has been an emotional roller coaster for everybody in their own way. And I think being forced to go outside, be active, be slightly social with his buddies and stuff like that, um, it, it really has been a godsend. Because <laughs> you heard but me and Lisa are looking for boyfriends and we're hoping that check-in from away is going to be a boyfriend magnet but what I'm wondering is because using dogs to pick up dates is like good do you think going out dressed like a dog will get me a date it will get you a date but perhaps not the kind of date you want <laughs> Harper picked us out because we were sitting in a pen we wanted a female so there were four chubby little puppies and they're all different. They're all different. Harper sat in the back and stared at us. And then finally, when we were done with the others, she kind of walked forward and went, okay, okay. So I picked her up and she was the first to kiss me. The others never kissed. And then I was like, oh, Randy, I think this might be Harper. We'd already picked out the name. I handed it her to him and she peed on him immediately. And I'm like, yep, yep. <laughs> she just marked us. She marked us. We're hers. What has it meant to you to have a dog in isolation as a companion? Oh, God, I'm so thankful to have Harper with us um, all my life. I've had dogs since I was a wee child. Um, they are s grounding forces, and they keep, for me personally, they keep me so sane. Uh, they make me more affectionate. They make me more adventurous, more athletic. And there's another quote about um, uh, uh, until a person has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened, which I believe. Um, that's Anatole France, I believe, or maybe it was Shania Twain. I don't know. Come here. Hey. <laughs> Come here. People want to see you. Come here. Come here. Let people meet you. Come here. Oh, my God. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here, come here. Oh my God, come here. Oh my God. <sighs> this is the sweet, sweet Georgia May, also known as Buttercup, AKA Bubby, the potato. Uh, she is six years old now. I keep thinking she's so much younger than what she is, but uh, she's six years old now. I don't know if you can hear. Frenchies, they sound like pigs. They are constantly snorting. Um, she is a whopping 30 pounds. So it's like having a small hippo running around your house. Sweet, sweet, sweetie. If you're someone who really, really wants a, a great, well-trained dog that's gonna really listen to everything you have to say and follow direction, um, this is not it. This is not it. Frenchies are funny and amazing, but they do what they want. They, this is the most stubborn animal I've ever met in my entire life. And I love her. I love her too much. But she doesn't listen to nobody. Come here. Georgia, come on. Do you want some cookies? We do some tricks. Come here. See, she's really good at it. One of these for for a trick. Okay, there's one. This is incentive. High five. No. High five. No. Stand up. Oh. It. Oh. The thing that she's really, really good at. What she is, is a master of disguise. actually a come from away dog because 
uh, one of our former cast members, Sue Dunstan, had poodles and his mom is actually her dog, Fancy. Favorite pepper mammy. Uh, that would have to be when we actually brought Pepper home because it was like a super surprise for the kids and the kids had wanted a dog for so long. The week before Christmas, we told them that they were going to go visit some friends for an hour and then they came back to the house and walked in the door and my wife led them into the living room and here was this amazing dog, Pepper the Poodle about this big, so tiny and so beautiful. And they just went crazy. They went absolutely crazy, but they thought it was a joke. They thought we were just like taunting them and teasing them. <laughs> so it was just amazing. They, they broke out in tears and it was just the best, best day ever. Richard, what has it meant for you and your family to have a dog in isolation during this time? Has it been a positive thing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's the best thing just for the kids because they, they both really love him. And well, I love him too. And obviously it's just something that occupies you and gives you something to care for and, you know, gets you out of the house too. It's actually my only sanity in the day is going for dog walks. So for me personally, it's just like a, a, a godsend. Like if you had to pick between your kids or Pepper, like who would you pick? <laughs> uh... I have to pick my kids, right, Pepper? <laughs> Although they would probably say it was Pepper because they, they're all like, they always say that I'm his favorite, so. Aww. Aww, that's so cute. Just leave him be, let him. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't. So we've done a lot of road trips together, obviously because of, you know, being a, an actor, a theater actor in Canada, you're on the road a lot. So he has traveled to many places with me. I think one of the most special trips we had was, um, I was in Shimanus on Vancouver Island doing a show one summer. And on a weekend, a bunch of us from the cast went to Tofino for the weekend. We went camping and Rigby came with me and stayed in the tent and ran along the beach and all of that kind of stuff. And that was a pretty, pretty fun memory. Our very first date, Michael and I, um, when we got home from the date, Michael walked me home and we were sitting on my back patio at the time having a cup of tea and Rigby was there and it was the first time that Michael met him and Rigby jumped up and ran out into the backyard after a skunk and got skunked. And so the rest of our first date was spent cleaning Rigby, and we've been together ever since. <laughs> Tricks, come, come on. Yeah, can you sit up? Sit up. Sit up. Yeah, Wait, can you see him? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. So I'm here, you sit down. Good, yeah, good. Can you shake a paw? Oh, very good. Can you shake the other paw? Oh, very good. Good one. Um, what else can he do? Lay down. He can roll over, but he probably won't on this floor. It's a little oh, bit. Oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> um, what else did we do? He's good at, can you just sit? Sit there. If, if we were across the room, it's hard. Like if I was far from him, he does this thing with his nose if I say touch. Touch. See? <laughs> did you see me? Yeah. yeah. It's made it so much easier. I, I actually don't know what would have happened without him. He, he gives structure to my day. So it's been, it's been, a, you know, a big help because you have to, with a dog, you have to stay on a schedule. You have to have a structure. You can't just do whatever you want. Hi, I'm Clint, one of the standbys with Come From Away. I'm going to introduce you to my dog, Winter. Come here. Come here. Sit, sit. Turn around for me. Here she is. Okay. So Winter is seven and a half years old. Hi. She is a mutt, a poodle, schnauzer, and some other things. I like to say that she is 98% angel and 2% devil. Um, and we're gonna show you what she can do. She's all dressed for pride. Do you want a cookie? Yeah, paw. This paw. Lie down. Do you want it? Tell me. Okay, good girl.
So if any of you folks have seen the movie called Best in Show. Yes. That is actually, a, it's, a, it's a farce and a spoof, but it is a spoof on an actual industry of dog sports, dog show. And actually, a lot of the judges and handlers are real judges and handlers that were asked to make that movie. So people I know who actually have regular jobs and are confirmation AKC or CKC judges or ha professional handlers, they they um, made that movie. Yeah. yeah. So that it was actually filmed fairly accurately to how rings are run. Uh, the, the dog show rings are, you know, running. It's so funny because people will ask me, so what show are you in? Are you doing a show? I'm like, yeah, the dog show. <laughs> what is your favorite doggy memory? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. I have lots of doggy memories. Um, I suppose it could be when I finished my first dog myself. So I've had dogs for years and I've had Doberman since 2000. Um, but Rudy, who you saw first, I finished him myself, meaning I learned how to show dogs, how to train dogs, how to handle dogs, and actually win, win your points, and for him to become a champion. And I did it all myself, which was, you know, pretty good, and hired somebody to do it for me. And um, I think when he finished, that was a pretty proud moment for me. In terms of, you know, the pandemic and being in isolation, what has it meant to you to like have eight dogs? With me, oh, it's the best time in the world for you to have a pandemic when you have a farm acreage and animals. Like, truthfully, I know this is, I mean, it's completely different to my friends in New York City and even in Toronto to that point. But like, if I didn't turn the news on, I wouldn't even know what was happening out here because I have no neighbors. I've seen your flag on the mob lodge and love is not. Old and wise dogs or puppies? Oh, both. Puppy dog eyes or resting female dog face? Well, yeah, Augie kind of has that resting female dog face, so I'm going to have to go with that. <laughs> Augie or Lail? Oh, I mean, Lail would tell me I'd be an idiot if I didn't pick Augie, so... Cats or dogs? I love them both. Dogs, though. I love cats. Yeah. Terriers or poodle? Terriers or poodle? Terriers. Poodles are a little high strung for me. I do love cats. See? Harper or Randy? Well, I can't choose. That's like Sophie's choice. Come on. I can't. <laughs> Beagles or wiener dogs? Beagle. The musical Cats or Dogs? Dogs. Lady or the Tramp? Tramp. <laughs> okay, here we go, a couple more. Pepper or Janice Mosier? Pepper. <laughs> Newfoundland Dogs or Chihuahuas? Newfoundland Dogs. <laughs> German Shepherds or Bulldogs? Probably a German Shepherd. Rigby or Michael? Rigby. <laughs> what? <laughs> he knows. He knows. Rigby is the knows. He knows that. He 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 knows that. Rigby is the love of my life. He's my child. He's I would do anything for him. And then the last question is super savage. Rank your eight dogs from your favorite to your least favorite. <laughs> well, my favorites are the dogs I've had the longest, truthfully, because you're just, they're, they're like, you just have them for longer. So I would say that Rudy and Vega are my, you know, I've had them the longest and they are, you know, and then of course Fancy. And then you have all the young ones. And, oh my god, how terrible, right? But you know, Star and Petunia, I have trained them longer, and 
Star is also my first Vega daughter. So, you know, that means something to me as well. And it was a very long journey to, to actually successfully have Vega uh, bred and have puppies. So she was an achievement in herself to even come to fruition. So, and then Queenie, who is um, second daughter. And then I've got the two poodles. Those poodles are a pain. I tell you, they love to jump. They're all over you and they're a lot. So not that they're last, but you know, I put them <laughs> in seven and eight. But uh, right. I admire that you were so honest with us and I thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Check In From Away. See you next Tuesday. Cheers. <laughs> Lisa, I want to tell you I'm not very impressed right now that Oscar is sleeping. He has a job to do. He's supposed to be co-hosting. He's not asking any questions. He's sleeping. He's being very rude. Yeah, he's kind of like the most hardcore diva we've ever had on Check-In From Away, I think. Absolutely.